I never thought I'd be one of those woodworkers that make shop machinery out of plywood, but I found myself doing just that. And I made this 18 inch wide drum sander. So I've got some projects coming up that I'm gonna use ambrosia maple. And I'm learning pretty quickly with the planer and the knives that are in it, that it chips out that ambrosia maple pretty bad, um, even with new knives. That's, I think it's just because of the way the ambrosia maple's grain is. Um, if I put it through the planer one way, it uh, doesn't chip out anything except for the end. But if I flip it around, it chips out even more and worse. And I didn't want to sit there with a hand sander or a, an orbital sander sanding for hours to get those chips out. So I found myself researching uh, drum sanders. I found out pretty quickly they're pretty expensive and out of my price range. Um, for a 12 inch drum sander, I was looking at $1,000. For an 18 inch, $1,500 plus. So I switched my research into DIY drum sanders and I found um, a couple on the internet. Stumpy Nubs has one that he designed. Um, a couple others were that I found and I decided to design my own. Um, I had some leftover parts from my um, CNC upgrade that I figured I could design into it um, around those parts. So the one that I designed and came up with has a power feed table and a variable speed control, as well as a hand crank wheel that lifts and raises and lowers the power feed table, um, making it easy for those quick adjustments. So I'm breaking this build up into three videos. The first one will be the power feed table and how I constructed that. Uh, video two will be the actual cabinet or carcass that everything's gonna fit in. And video three is gonna feature the motor, the drum, and all the electronics uh, that go into making this sander. So don't go anywhere and follow the journey of the 18 inch wide drum sander. The first step is to make a torsion box. Uh, I had routed this out on the CNC. Um, since I had this designed up in a 3D CAD software, I figured why not just use the CNC to make these parts. Um, if there's something different I would do with this is I would make the uh, slots or dados a little bit wider, making it a little easier to install the top part of this box. Fitting those aluminum rails just to make sure that they fit nice and snug adding a couple screws to each uh, location to make sure it uh, holds down tight. So I'm just adding some screws to these 3D printed parts I made that go on the ends of the aluminum rails, getting them prepared for uh, test fitting. All right, so the motor mount on this side goes opposite of the open one and then you get the uh, normal bracket on that side all right as i was putting this together um i got these cold rolled steel um, brackets in the mail i had a good friend of mine cut these out on a laser um, so now that i got these installed i'm going to add some bearings to these holes that go for a uh, quarter 20 threaded rod so let me get these installed and figure out the length that i need to cut that rod to with the uh, rod cut to length, um, I need to focus on how I'm gonna keep that rod um, in place and what's gonna drive the belt. And that's gonna be a PVC pipe. And I'm using these 3D um, printed parts um, that'll go inside that PVC pipe and the threaded rod will slide through it. I'm adding some heat inserts that it's gonna lock these into the PVC pipe. Now with the first one installed, um, I can flip it around and put my attention to the other side, which is going to be an adjustable one to put tension on the um, drive belt. So I'm utilizing the aluminum extrusion and using the quarter 20 threaded rods. Um, and this is what's going to help me put tension on this back roller. Um, that way I can dial in the tracking of that belt. 
All right, now that I got the front and back on, they both run freely. This side's gonna have the motor. This is gonna be free moving. And then I can adjust the tension here to the belt. Um, so the next thing I need to do is clean up. I need to cut these down um, so that I can get the belt on. We'll see how it works. So I realized the PVC pipe was too smooth and the power feed belt was just gonna slip. So I took some old bicycle tubing and um, any way I could get it slid over the PVC pipe. Um, I figured that uh, isopropyl alcohol was the best to help get things um, moving, getting that on. So I decided to add some high pressure laminate to the top and bottom of the torsion box. Um, I figured that with the moving belt over MDF, it was just going to wear away the MDF. So adding this high pressure laminate is just going to add a little more durability to this table um, with use. Now to add just a radius to the ends of these tables so that, um, again, it doesn't wear the belt down or the table down. All right, so after routing the edges of that, I decided to smooth them out with a sander um, just to make it a little smoother. And then to make sure the ends of the tubing don't come off of the roller belts, I'm adding some uh, super glue. All right, with everything um, ready to be assembled, I've got it all laid out and just start assembling the aluminum to the torsion box um, and add those um, T-nuts and screws. And the brackets with just the hole, well, there's two different ones. One's got a slot, this is for the adjustable side, this is the fixed side where the motor's gonna go. So these T-nuts are a pain to install. I should have got the drop-in T-nuts. That would have made this process a lot easier. All right, now that I got this installed on the free side, so this is the freewheeling side, um, and I can adjust it um, out on both of these blocks. Um, what that does is it'll help with tracking. Um, once I get the motor installed and the drive side installed, I can turn it on and see which way it tracks. And then I can adjust these bolts um, so it tracks straight. Um, and then I can lock it down with the carriage bolts so it can't move um, during use. So now that I got this side installed, I flip around and install the drive side. So this plate right here is a 3D printed plate. Um, at the time I, I had my friend cut out these um, steel plates, I didn't have the design of this yet, so I'll have to go back and ask him if he can uh, do that for me. Um, or I can cut it out of aluminum. I got a piece here that I could do. Uh, now that I have this here, I can um, lock it in on that side and then give this a test run to see how it runs. Now with the rollers installed, I can focus on the electronics. The power supply is a leftover from the CNC upgrade. All right, now to add the belt. Now the belt is a um, sanding belt that I found online. I'll put a link in the description below of where I found that at. So I've got the track um, or sandpaper on the bottom now. I just need to adjust these out to give it some tension. Um, and then once I get that, I can start playing with tracking and see how it tracks with the power feed on. All right, let's see if it's alive.
that is looking really nice. It's uh, tracking nice. I've got everything adjusted. So now what I need to do is add nuts to these carriage bolts. That will lock this block to this plate, um, keeping it nice and tight so it won't wander or move over time. So I can uh, add those now. All right, so that's gonna bring video number one to an end. Um, next video, we'll be doing the cabinet that will actually, this will actually sit in and have, we'll be able to raise up and down so that can raise up into the sanding drum to get the different thicknesses that I want. And I've got some 3D printed um, parts that I did that will go right here um, just for testing purposes to make sure that it works. Um, once I know it works, I'll machine those out of aluminum, but they will also ride on the aluminum extrusion that I used here, just going up and down. So stay tuned for that video and I'll see you next time here on Smedley Wood Design. Now to lock this in, um, I just need to add some, let me move this right here. All right, so that's working really good. Here, let me do take five.